Hey, welcome to the podcast, V Mystery. Thank you. Um, Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, we're so excited to, I shouldn't say we, Lanny is not here and she's so sad she's not here. I'm sad that I missed her. She woke up with a throat that was on fire and she actually said, because on the last podcast we were like, you always get Ryan and I sick. And so she was very aware and out of respect for you, she was like, you know what? Yeah, let's I'm not, not. going to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to no, do that. Good. But <laughs> she's got her questions that she sent to me. Okay, great. So we'll make sure that we cover them. No problem. We can do that. <laughs> um, but I am so excited to have you on. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And I told Ryan when you came here, I'm like, this is a celebrity <laughs> facialist. I, I, I find it crazy still when people say celebrity facialist because I'm like, wait, what's one of them? Right. Because... Aren't we all just celebrities in our own right now? Like, aren't we just like all? Yeah, I mean that's really empowering. We are, yeah. but you are actually a ce- like. And I'm gonna I, I'm gonna get some names out of you once we get a little more comfortable because I need to know some of the famous faces oh. that you have touched. Oh. Well, uh, there are some NDAs that I've unfortunately had to sign, so my lips are sealed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, you'll tell me. You'll tell me on the side. You'll tell me on the side, maybe. Um, so you are the owner of Skin by V. I am. Yes. Um, um, and you also are a regular at TIFF. Yes. You were at New York Fashion Week this yes. year. Yes, that was all very exciting. That is crazy. Uh-huh. Um, and maybe you can talk to us just a little bit before we get into all of the questions that our listeners had, um, a little bit about your skin philosophy yeah. um, and sort of like the the routine that you subscribe to. Yeah. So I think for me, looking at skin... Um, it's always to make it healthy, happy, and strong. Um, You know, we don't spot treat our body. So when we work out, we don't do a million crunches. Well, maybe some people do, but, you know, you don't do a million crunches and hope you're going to get a six pack. You need to work in synergy with everything. And that's really my philosophy for skin. You know, skin is a map of what's going on internally. So definitely look at gut health, stress health, lifestyle, medication, Um, the climate. So people who are flying from, you know, back and forth to all these different places. So all these different variables will really affect what we do see on our skin. So hoping that we know we can throw a product on it and it's going to correct it. It's a very redundant way of treating the skin. So for me, when I speak to a client, it's really like, okay, well, what is your concern? Oh, you have dehydration, you have acne, you have pigmentation, you've got premature aging, you know, okay, so where is that coming from? What's your food intake? What's your water intake? What's your alcohol intake? If you talk to a Brit, we're probably pretty much 90% alcohol, 10% water, maybe even 5% coffee, you know? Uh, I love that. And your skin is is glowing. So that makes me feel good about it. Yeah. So so that's kind of, you know, so I I feel like it's really holistically. um, One of the big questions that I always ask my clients as well is how often do you poo? Because pooing is a thing. Yeah. And it's a question that people kind of like take a moment and like, wait, what? You just asked me how much I'm shitting. Yeah, we're getting real personal here. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's actually really funny you mentioned that because I was out for dinner last night with girlfriends. And one of my friends who's had amazing skin all her life has basically been constipated for two years. And she saw her doctor and her doctor was, and and, and horrible breakouts, cystic. And her doctor was like, I can give you a laxative. I don't really know what to do. And so she ended up seeing a functional medicine expert and they were like, you have candida, you have X, Y, Z, basically put her on a whole plan. And within three weeks, it was totally gone. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's actually like, it's it's a thing. Yeah. To your point, it like bowel movements, whatever it is, it's a whole holistic approach. It's not just like, you know, you have this one problem and we can fix it with a cream. It's what are the other things that are in your lifestyle contributing to what's happening on your skin? Yeah. So my philosophy is that it's like taking the person as an entirety and saying, okay, what's going on with him or her? Mm -hmm. And then understanding that we need to fix all the other things. And alongside that will be skincare alongside that will be a consistent routine right. and alongside that if you have the budget and you have the time and you can get in to see me then you come in and we can do facials as well right so it's not like this is a jigsaw puzzle so you need multiple pieces to make up that entire picture and that is our body so you know 
be a little bit more kinder to yourself mm -hmm. and go poo every day. Uh <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Yeah. Take those bowel movements in the yeah, morning. Yeah, take a shit. It'll yeah. be good for you. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, all, it's all working together. And you don't have to have a million products. And you can have a million products if you want, but it's not a necessity. It's really finding things that work with each person's lifestyle, time, you know, budget, all those sorts of things. It's not meant to be overwhelming. So my goal is to, you know, make it really simple, make it easy to digest, small nuggets, make it realistic with each person's lifestyle and empower them to say, yeah, no, I'm going to stick to this mm. and I'm going to get to the other end. And I do often say, yeah, I can fix your skin, but it's not going to happen in a week or two weeks. This is going to be three months, six months, nine months. It's going to take a it's year. A process. Yeah. Yeah. So be patient. We're going to do this together. I'm going to hold your hand and we'll be fine. Mm, okay. So be patient, which I think is huge because I feel like so many products right now are marketed as the quick fix. Yeah. Right. It's like, yeah. use this one product, try this one thing. It'll get rid of your acne, your wrinkles, your melasma. And I feel like social media, we were just talking mm -hmm. about this, mm -hmm. does not help with the confusion mm -hmm. of how do we use? Yeah. Like what products are we using? So we got a lot of questions about this and maybe we can start here with, yeah. and now this might vary with age, but what are the non-negotiables? The things that people absolutely need, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, that everybody should be using. Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to really keep it simple. It okay. doesn't have to be complicated. You must cleanse in the morning. Okay. I love cleansing balms. I love cleansing oils. It's enough to take away what happened at nighttime. So if you got all hot and sweaty last night, don't worry, we got you. I did. Uh, there you go. Yeah. yeah got As a, a result flustered. of uh, early onset <laughs> menopause. <laughs> Dirty Not the happening. other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, you know, at, at nighttime, that's when our skin is in its optimal state of rejuvenation. We're bringing up all the, you know, new, healthy, happy skin cells, sloughing away all the dead skin cells. Unfortunately, that sloughing process doesn't always happen properly. Okay. So a gentle cleanser. I like the oil. I like a balm cleanser. And if you are acne prone, you are not going to break out. I 100% guarantee you won't. Um, it's gentle enough to remove that sloughing of dead skin cells, prepare your pH balance properly, and then you're going to go straight. Sorry, one, one question. Yeah, yeah. Cold water. Oh, yes. Right? Guys, Cold this is water, a, I used yes. to rinse with warm no. to hot water. Yep. What that was like, what yeah, was I doing? It's, yeah. The reason why sometimes your pores will look more larger than, you know, than other days is because there's a buildup of sebum, which is your natural oil um, and dead keratinized skin cells. So we're going to use a product which is going to um, detach that glue like substance and flush it out. That's when your pores are going to look more refined, almost like they are more tighter. And that's just from cleansing with cold water. That's cleansing with right. cold water. Okay. Okay. Ryan, do you have large pores? Is that, is that an issue? <laughs> yeah, my nose with? is a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so your nose is a nightmare because that bridge is where we have the most amount of pores. And so you're finding that you're producing more oil. That's normal. You need that oil to remain young and youthful and rejuvenated and stay lipid and, and dewy and um, wet. I always say wet is good because otherwise you'd be a prune and we don't like prunes. Um, but, <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, it's what you can do for that is really using things like ingredients, ingredients such as glycolic acid, salicylic acid. These ingredients are going to go in and really dislodge that glue-like substance and flush it out, keep the pores nice and clean. Okay. So okay, that's, got it. So yeah. cleanse, cold water. Cold water. Okay, okay. next. Okay. Next, if you're going to keep it super simple, you're just going to use a moisturizer. Okay, you need no to, vitamin C. Listen, I'm, I'm going to say to you, you're going to need a vitamin C, you're going to need a hyaluronic acid, you're going to need this, you're going to need that, you're going to need that. Right. But then you just said, what are the non-negotiables? You're right. You're right. Right? Yeah. So let's... Let's just say if you could only do a couple of things yeah. and you just want to know that you're going to stick to it, you use a really good cleanser in the morning, you use the moisturizer and the moisturizer 
as you get into the warmer weathers in the daytime, you're going to use a lightweight, creamy moisturizer. Maybe you're a little bit more oily. You produce a little bit more sebum. You want to use a nice gel type of moisturizer. Even um, a thicker serum can also double up as a you know moisturizer. And then finally, 365 days a year, Ryan, you, you know are going say. to use an SPF. So you are not going to just use it because I go out in the sun. Right. Oh, I use it when I go to the beach or I use it when I get to Florida. No, you're going to use it every day in the winter, every single day, because UVA and UVB penetrates through our climate, regardless of what time of year we're in. I mean, you have a plant. It doesn't die from, you know, October to, you know, whatever, March until the sun comes out. No, it's still thriving mm -hmm. because even if it's gray and dull, there's still UV rays coming through and it's these rays that are attacking our skin. So if you're, you know, looking at pro-aging, you want to delay the signs of aging, you want to prevent those signs of, you know, early onset aging, then SPF is your key because it's UV rays that are breaking down our protein cells, which is our collagen and our elastin. Right. Which is what everyone is concerned about. Everyone. Everyone. Even like the 20 year old is oh my God, I have a wrinkle. It's okay, sweetheart. We're going to be all right. olds. That's insane. We are going to be okay. That's insane. Ryan, do you wear sunscreen every day? Because you are in landscaping. Yeah, someone who works outside all the time. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't. I, I've neglected sunscreen my entire life, pretty much. Shakes her v, head we gotta disgust. get We got to get him a sunscreen. <laughs> and I'd say most guys I know also do the same thing, especially yeah. older men. They don't, yeah. they, they just don't wear it. So. And, and it's interesting you bring the topic up about men because- Men also have skin. You know, we it, it's a different type of skin. It's a different type of texture because their hormones are slightly different, which impacts, you know, the thickness and the keratinization of the skin. But you have to wash and you have to moisturize. And just an SPF is simple and easy. I'm hopping on board. You, you and yeah, I just I'm got in. I just got Benji on a skincare routine. He's, I don't know, 43, 44. He's like, never use skincare. He has no, I mean, you, you both have beards. So I feel like half your face is covered <laughs> anyway. So it's like, you can't even see what's going on, but it's like men, it's like, they, they don't have to worry. You know what? They don't have to worry, but they do have to worry because, um, the time they're going to worry is when suddenly there's this change and they're like, wait, what's happening? Right. Like what, what just happened overnight? This was, no, it wasn't overnight. Right. It's been a sort of it's progression. You just didn't recognize that it was happening. Yeah. So, to, so moisturizer, uh, sorry, cleanse, moisturizer, SPF, yeah. done. That's your daytime. Okay. At nighttime, the only extra thing that you're going to do for me is you're going to cleanse with that balm or oil at first because it's an oil-based product. So it tracks itself to oil, which means that's pollution on your skin from the day, SPF, maybe makeup. So the oil is going to remove that properly. Okay. And then you're going to go in with a treatment cleanser. So if you're concerned with acne, bumpies, congestion, yeah. you're going to lean towards ingredients such as, like I said, salicylic acid, glycolic yeah. acid. If you're more concerned with pigmentation, dehydration, you can lean more towards mantelic acids, lactic acids. These are large molecular structures. They don't penetrate too quickly, but they leave the skin hydrated and beautifully like bright. Okay. It looks, you know, bright, like it has life to it. So you're going to use a second step cleanser and then you rinse that all off with cold water. Dry your skin, moisturizer, and go to bed. And go to bed. Okay. That sounds simple enough for you to do. Okay. This episode is sponsored by the one and only Skin by V. I am so excited. I mean, I'm going to be personally using this discount code because I use so many products from V. I'm going to give a shout out to the Gua Sha Cryo Sticks, which we mentioned on this episode. Honestly, I use them whenever I travel. They're so good for depuffing, getting the circulation going. You know, you drink a lot on holiday. You eat a lot of salty foods. It really helps kind of get my skin back to where it needs to be. Um, the Elemis Cleansing Balm, guys, this is like a dream. I've recommended this to so many people. As a first cleanser, I'm going to be ordering that as well. Some of my Jan Marini products. Honestly, you cannot go wrong with anything from V. So go check it out, skinbyv.com for 15%. 15% off your first order. Code is Annie and Ren15 plus 
Plus, because V is so generous, you get a gift with purchase with your order. From now until end of May, go online, check it out. You're welcome. So, okay, so now let's get into some specifics that I think people have a lot of questions about. So we talked about vitamin C. I feel like that's a big one. Necessary, not for what age, what skin type. Okay, so your vitamin C is an antioxidant. So it's basically to help shield um, the skin from free radicals. Free radicals are tiny little molecules that are attacking our skin every single day. Um, Our skin also produces its own free radicals, which attack the cells further, much more deeper in the skin. So we use a vitamin C to prevent that from happening. These free radicals have the ability to break down our collagen, our elastin cells. It also compromises our melanocytes, which is our pigment cells. So if somebody is prone to getting pigmentation really quickly, if your skin barrier is a little bit more compromised, your free ra- your 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 vitamin C is going to shield and protect you. So from melasma. From mel- well, okay. So melasma Sorry, is that a separate? Is, that's a, yeah. Okay. Let's, so we'll let's, talk let's about that in a second. In a bit. Okay. So your vitamin C, you should use it every single day, morning. Okay. If you have pigmentation, use it morning and night. Okay. Vitamin C is, um, okay, so let's let's talk about salad. If you said, oh, so if you had a salad, and I'm like, oh, okay, what type of salad? Just a salad. I'm like, so what was in the salad? It was a salad. So that's what a vitamin C is. Vitamin Cs are made with different supporting ingredients. So some people might say to me, oh, I tried a vitamin C and it really made my skin reactive. Mm-hmm. Maybe the lysorbic acid that was in there was too high. So you want to look for vitamin Cs, which have things like vitamin E, tocopherol. These are your supporting ingredients that help repair the skin barrier. Okay. So this is, so it's not just a generic, hey, I'm going to go and get a vitamin C. Right. I'm going to go get a salad. Well, what type of vitamin C? And for these sorts of things, I always say, you know, speak to your favorite facialist, you know, your favorite expert not an influencer because they're mm. not trained, unfortunately, in the world of skincare um, or skin anatomy. Speak to somebody that understands, you know, products and how things are, are created. So, yes, you need a vitamin C, okay. but really important that we lean on proper ingredients to correct what is going on on the skin so you don't have an adverse reaction. Okay, and favorite vitamin Cs for more acne-prone skin and then maybe just more like a combination or regular skin? So I would say um, like if you are more um, like preventing aging, you're sort of like into your mid-30s and going up. Yep. I love vitamin C capsules, like okay. the little ampules. Yep. They're pure lysorbic acid. Um, they're very concentrated, but because the skin can tend to be a little bit more lacking in laxity, we're starting to see that dip in collagen production. We're starting to want to give a little bit more of a kick mm-hmm. with that vitamin C. Anything younger than that, I would say, you know, look for vitamin C's with um, a vitamin E in it. Look for vitamin C's that are um, uh, maybe in a pump with plant stem cells, like supporting in ingredients to really help like a a global effect on the skin okay one last thing that i want to say about vitamin c is vitamin c itself is a very unstable molecule so when you use it from a dropper it oxidizes really quickly your vitamin c should be white in color or should be in an airless pump or in a capsule like we spoke about that is when you're going to get the optimization in delivery of a pure vitamin C. Once it oxidizes, it can create irritation on the skin. Mm. So be very mindful of if you're taking droppers out or if you're opening bottles, air's getting into it. It's going to oxidize the product. That is very good advice because I feel like I have one with a dropper that I was coming back to after I'd used it for six months. Oh gosh. Yeah, I feel like it was- a little ambery yellow? Yeah. Yeah. So don't, okay, that is a very good tip. And it's so Throw expensive. It yes, yes. So, I, so that's a really, so a pump or an capsules. Pump or okay. a capsule, okay. that's going to be your best bet. Um, okay, so the next product people asked about, retinols. Yes. Okay. So do we need it? 
Do we not? Who needs it? Every, Does okay. Ryan need it? <laughs> um, Ryan just needs to cleanse, moisturize, and use SPF. Yes. That's it. <laughs> We're good with that. Yeah. Um, okay. So retinols, um, let's talk about vitamin A. Okay. So that is the original form. Okay. It then changes depending on how things are formulated, what the supporting ingredients are, the molecular structure, um, what what else it's paired with. And so it will change its name. So you may have heard it um, as a tretinoin, which is a prescription, a daplane, a prescription. These are pure vitamin A's. They're really going to re- go in and resurface the skin. What we're doing with a vitamin A is accelerating the cell turnover. So we're really getting that beautiful smooth texture, that beautiful plumping to any fine lines, wrinkles. If you have acne, if you have pigmentation, it's going to resurface all of that, brighten everything. Now, the problem is if you go more towards a prescription base, just pure prescription, you've heard of like that horrible, ugly downtime to retinol where Mm -hmm. you're like flaking and sloughing and irritated and you just keep going and you're like, okay, if I keep going, I'm going to be fine. The problem is not everyone's skin barrier is ready for that excessive delivery of that vitamin A. So you want to lean on something like a retinolahide, a retinol, which is combined with ceramides, peptides. These are hydrating factors. So you're still getting the benefits of a vitamin A, but you're also getting the hydration. You're also getting that beautiful um, occlusiveness. You're getting that balancing to the skin. So vitamin A is, yes, necessary for everyone. You can start as young. Um, I I was listening to um, uh, a dermatologist uh, a few weeks ago, and he said the original um, research that was done on vitamin A, they actually were able to start kids as young as 10, 12. Oh, and wow. yeah, so it wasn't an issue, okay. but it's more how the industry has like, really just fucked it up even yeah. more. Well, I was going to say, I feel like the messaging is like, you need a, like only need it when you're much older. Yeah. But imagine like in today's climate, I mean, we both have kids. Yeah. Sometimes our kids are experiencing skin issues at an earlier age because mm-hmm. of food and hormones and stress and lifestyle. So they can use it. Okay. You just want to speak to somebody who's really able to understand what's going on with each person's skin. Okay. And then prescribe a, a vitamin A according to that. Okay. And do you have specific brands for retinols that yes. you really love? Yes. Okay. It took me a long time to find them, to okay. be honest. Um, so I retail the Jan Marini Skin Research. Love, love, love. Obs- do you know that's actually how I found you? Really? So Stop. I was dealing with, hor- I mean, I've had horrible kind of like cystic acne my whole, I mean, not my whole life, but really when I was a teenager and then it kind of resurfaced again in my thirties and, um, and it, it just came back and I really did not know what to do. And I found Jan Marini products, um, through, I don't know, online somewhere and they were amazing. And then I was looking for, um, a retailer here and you were like the only person who carried this brand. And it honestly, that brand really changed my skin. I think it's incredible if you have acne prone skin. Um, and, and so that's how I met you. And that's how I came to you. So crazy. But her products are incredible medical grade products. Yeah. I love her. I think she's such a veteran in our industry. Um, you know, she has like, I think, I don't know how many patents under her belt. Um, she actually was the original individual that created the skin SkinCeuticals CE Frulic. Really? Way back. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. That's way, way, way back. Okay. Originally, she was the one. And then... And that was um, like, that's a cult that's favorite a cult now. Favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Okay, so you recommend her retinol. I love it. For people maybe so, with more acne prone yeah. skin. Okay. So there's two that that we have. So there's one which is um Jan Marini Skin Research um Luminate Lotion. Okay. Which is the lotion part confuses people. It is a serum, so okay. you want your moisturizer to go on top, but it has an odorless and a colorless um turmeric. So it's great for somebody struggling with pigmentation. Okay. So use that one. If you are somebody that is more concerned with aging, 
fine lines, wrinkles, you want to delay signs, your skin's maybe more dehydrated, um, you want to lean towards the age intervention okay. um, vitamin A. Um, there's another one that I actually really like for acne, sensitive skin, and it's actually by Dermaquest, and it's called the Retinellahyde Renewal Cream. Okay. And this one is actually combined with the plant st um, stem cells. Um, it, the Retinellahyde is this beautiful delivery, so it's a slow release. So anybody who has that underlying inflammation, um, it's going to be slower and more eased in, but it exfoliates the skin. It makes the skin nice and smooth. If you have postulated acne, inflamed acne, cystic acne, it's really going to help calm that down as well as accelerating that cell turnover. Okay. So I would lean on that one. And is this retinols are just a couple days a week? So the retinella hide renewal cream, you can use it as your moisturizer at nighttime every single night. Okay. The Jan Marini um, two vitamin um, A's that I said, I would suggest using it twice a week at night only underneath your moisturizer for two weeks. Okay. Each two week intervals, add on an extra night until you build up until to you every see what your single skin is. night. Okay. And if you feel like the skin, um, as you add on an extra night, suddenly responds in an adverse way, it's irritated or dry, pull back. Okay. You're still going to get the benefits of it. You're just not going to irritate the shit out of your skin barrier okay. and then mess it up. And then I have to go ahead. and Right. And then you've got to fix it all. Yeah. Which yeah. has happened. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> let's maybe get into some specific things that I feel like are really big buzzwords that people are talking about. And I think there's a lot of confusion. Yeah. So the first one, which I get very confused messaging about is dermaplaning. Yes. So I know you do it. I yes. mean, I have a lot of testosterone. So you basically <laughs> shave me when I come in. And it yeah. is really interesting to see how much hair comes off my face. Yeah. You are a fan of dermaplaning. I think some people think um, thinks that it can break them out or lead to clogged pores. Can you explain to us about dermaplaning? Yeah, so dermaplaning is when we take a surgical steel blade and we basically slough away all the dead skin cells. So dermaplaning in England, we were doing that years and years and years ago we'd started it years ago and then I think it was like maybe around 2012 2013 I started hearing about it happening in Canada and I was like oh and people were like oh my god people are shaving their face we're gonna have a beard right. so it kind of doesn't work that way we take a surgical steel blade we basically um, exfoliate the entire face the only part that I leave out is the upper lip and obviously the brows. Right. Um, and our hair that's on everywhere else on our face um, is it, it's called vellus hair. So it's controlled by a different hormone. So the same hair is going to grow back, never thicker or darker, because we just can't change the physiological structure of it. But on our upper lip, because that's more of a hormonal area, that's the reason why we don't shave that area. Okay. Now, a lot of people in Canada, it's really interesting. They started doing dermaplaning just for the hair removal part. Mm -hmm. But dermaplaning's original reason for doing it was to help exfoliate the ever so top layer of your epidermis. We refer to this as your stratum corneum. This is all your dead skin cells right on the surface. And on certain areas, I go in a little bit more. I can exfoliate a tad bit more. And on certain areas where it's thinner, where, you know, the skin is, is much more thinner, um, especially around the eyes as well, you, you go a little bit more gentle. So the goal for dermaplaning is to watch where you're actually exfoliating. Okay. Um, and yes, you're shaving the hair, but more importantly, we're removing that dead, dead skin. skin cells. Now... You talk about people saying, oh, I broke out, I got right. acne, I got irritated. Right. What I've heard when people have said that, and I asked them, okay, so was this done as part of a facial? And they're like, no, they cleansed me. And then they did this dermaplaning, threw on some moisturizer SPF and told me to basically get lost. And I was like, okay, well, there's your issue right there. Right. If you are exfoliating the skin and you are not healing and repairing and hydrating and finishing and closing off that skin barrier, anybody and everybody with the nicest skin and the most balanced skin is going to break out. Right. So please do not go and just get dermaplaning done okay. for the sake of hair removal. There are so many better ways of removing hair 
Derma planing's reason for being there um, as a solution is to exfoliate the stratum corneum. Okay. I want to ask about eye creams. I'm a part of a beauty group on, um, we just have like this chat and there was a big debate about the efficacy of eye creams. Mm. Do they work? Do they get rid of your bags? You know, the blue tints, like what, is it just moisturizing? Is it all garbage? What is your stance on it? Do we need one? Yes. I didn't hear, I didn't hear eye cream in the necessities. Okay. So yes, you need one. Um, our eye area is six times thinner than anywhere else on our face. So the molecular structure from an eye cream is going to represent the ability to absorb into that fragile, delicate area. Um, think about having like a round, you know, peg and trying to shove it into a square. Mm -hmm. It's just never going to go in. And that's your moisturizer. So your moisturizer is an occlusive hydrator for your skin. Um, and I didn't mention it in the three steps because if I start mentioning more things, that person who's like, I want something simple is going to be like, oh, like I can't do that. But I promise you within a couple of weeks after him or her using just those three steps, you know, like, oh, okay, this is working. And it's easy to then slide in, you know, other ingredients. So the right. vitamin Cs, the retinols, the eye cream, so on and so forth. Um, so that being said, yes, you need an eye cream. In terms of bags and puffiness and that blue tinge and the dipping, all of those things come from different variables. So it's hard to say, you know, is one eye cream going to fix all of that? No, there's different textures, there's different ingredients, there's, you know, eye patches that we can lean on for somebody that maybe doesn't, you know, is waking up really puffy and doesn't have the time to put on an eye cream or whatever. So there's lots of different solutions that we have for that. Um, if you are somebody that is prone to, like this is like a generic answer, mm -hmm. so take it with a grain of salt. But if you're somebody that struggles with, um, really puffiness, you wake up in the morning, there's bags, there's puffiness, try and eliminate your eye cream in your routine at nighttime because your eye cream is a humectant. It's there to pull moisture. It's going to um, make the bags look more prominent. So you only use your eye cream in the morning. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah. If you find that you uh, have got texture, you've got the darkness, you've got dehydration, it's dry, you want to use a bit more of a creamy sort of texture. Okay. Again, this is generic. We have to look at ingredients too. Um, but each product is created so differently. Um, but but that hydration, you need that more occlusive hydration. Okay. If you are somebody that has really deep lines, you can see them, you can see that the dehydration, you need more help. Try and lean more on um, a serum, a, a water-based type of an eye cream. Okay. And for that, you could use it morning and night because it's such a lightweight. It's not going to create that humectant sort of action on the skin. Okay. Does that help a little yeah, bit? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think it's yeah. just a lot of confusion around it. And it's like, I've tried so many eye products and yeah. honestly, I'm like, I still look tired. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I, I don't know what my expectation is. Yeah. Um, I think that's the thing though. Your expectation has to be realistic, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's I not think it's magic. not, it's not going to get rid of it. No, it's no. just, and then obviously there's all these other factors, like you said, water, sleep, um, yes. you know, all these Huge. other things that are affecting obviously yeah. the eye bag. So like, there's no miracle cream out there. That's just going to solve it. No. Um, okay. Another question, and this is actually one that I have too, is for devices. So like, let's talk new face. Love let's new face. talk like those masks that you can buy that emit yes. red lights. Yes. Um, ice fixer rollers. Yeah. What works? What doesn't? If there's one thing that is a tool that people are going to invest in for at home care, what should it be? Hey, well, I'm going to obviously be biased here. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obviously say, well, my gua sha cryo sticks. <laughs> uh, They're, they are incredible. I you. have them. I know. I keep them in my freezer. Yeah. They honestly, I know there's a lot of ice rollers on the market. Yeah. Your cryo sticks. Yeah. Like I travel with them because that's when I get the most puffy from all the mm -hmm. salt and all the drinking. And I just do it in the morning mm -hmm. and it literally changes my yeah. face. And, you know, as a, as a business owner, as a facialist, as an expert, whatever the titles, 
I created that tool and I still to this day, I'm like, oh my God, what the hell? Like it is literally changing skin and it is phenomenal. And I hear estheticians, you know, tell me, oh my God, I couldn't do microcurrent. Uh, Another esthetician said it, I think a couple of weeks ago, she messaged me. She was like, look at this lift. It's insane. I couldn't do microcurrent on this one client. So I used the gua sha cryo sticks to get that lifting and that sculpting. It is insane to me to this day. Um, The depuffing, that beautiful finish to the skin, the cryo. So if there's one tool, obviously the gua sha cryo sticks. Yeah. Um, And I actually feel like it really helps me too when I break out. Yeah. Like I feel like it just like gets blood flowing. Like I'll see like a giant pimple coming and I use it. And honestly, within a couple days, like I used to be a slave to cortisone shots. Honestly, I had a clinic. I didn't need an appointment. I would go there and I would just feel something coming. Obviously it would happen before any major event, I'm yeah. like, why? It's like it yeah. knows your skin's just like, yeah. I'm gonna fuck you today. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, this is really yeah. fucking annoying. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks for letting me down. Thanks for like literally <laughs> fucking with my yeah. face today. And I would go and I would get these cortisone shots and it would work. It would go yeah. away within a couple of days, but I would get, and I know this happened to Lanny too, a lot of skin indentations yeah. because they go too deep. And yeah. then I'm like, how often can I be going for these? People who have struggled with perioral dermatitis, that redness around the face, Mm. um, rosacea. Yeah. People who have struggled with any type of dermatitis, so eczema, psoriasis, it flares up, it's so inflamed, it's so angry, it's so irritating. It's hot. It's hot. Yeah. And and it it can be really um, painful at times. People struggling with cystic acne. Yeah. They have started using the gua sha cryo sticks and adding them into their routine so regularly that it's literally changed their skin. Okay. And so the number one tool is the gua sha cryo, the cryo sticks. sticks. Yeah. Okay. And, and they're sustainable. They're created in a way that, you know, you'll have them forever. Okay. So you're investing in something good. Um, you mentioned new face. Yes. I love new face. I was very skeptical about new face because yeah. when you go online and you read the reviews, yeah. it's all over the place. Yeah. Um, and I got one, my sister-in-law actually was like, you need to get it. And so I got one a couple years yeah. ago. And now I think the big thing is I try to use it regularly yes. because it was, and and this was actually a really good tip. I feel like for, I mean, the, the cryo sticks you have to keep in your freezer, but yeah. I keep the new face now on my end table. Yes. Yeah. So literally when I'm like it's watching right a show at night, yeah. I'm like, like honestly, oh, there's good. no excuse. It's yeah. right there. Yeah. 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 So I love the new face, low level microcurrent. Microcurrent is... Think about it as like weightlifting for your face. So we're just sculpting and lifting our muscles back where they need to be. Um, Because our skin is attached to our facial muscles, we get skin tightening simultaneously. So it's a workout for your facial muscles. You do need to commit to it. That's the thing. Um, I say for the first 30 days, um, do it every single day, five minutes. That's all you need. Um, And then after that, you can do a maintenance. So do it once a week twice a month, three t- like don't be so hard on yourself. Just, just do it. Just do it when you just can. It. That's exactly it. Um, I love the new face. Definitely invest in it if you can. Um, one of my favorites. In terms of the LED masks, there is so many LED masks out so there. It is really hard to try and find which one's good. I think the goal is, is that you need to understand that the LED masks that you're using at home is slightly different technology to what we have within our studio. It's not bad and it's not that it's not going to work, but just remember that your results need to be, your your approach needs to be realistic. So you're not going to get the same results that you would get when you're in the studio with me. You're going to get maintenance right. at home. Well, and those masks are expensive. They are expensive. So maybe start with cryo sticks yeah. or the new face. Yeah, and then build up. Yeah. And then this way you're in a good routine. You know that you're committing to it. Yeah. You're not just purchasing things and investing more money into a whole ton of stuff that sits in your cupboard. Yeah, well, I think that's the biggest thing. And I, I, I like that you said that at the beginning of the episode where it's like, you don't need a million products. And I, no. I'm i very guilty of this where I'm yeah. like, you know, I see something on social media and I'm like, oh my God, well, I have to try this yeah. or I need this product. And the yeah. truth is, you don't. No. You only need a few. Yeah. Um, and not to get so overwhelmed by everything that's no. out there. And with, uh, actually, this is another question. When you're putting on your creams, are you- you're, Always you're, up with. Always up. Always. Don't push gravity down. Gravity does that for us. So we're right. working against gravity, guys. Okay. And don't go round and round in circles. Oh, oh. my 
God. Okay. My Oof. biggest pet peeve. Right. Can I just tell you when I see people doing this, I'm like, stop doing right. that. Don't do do it. not. Don't. Don't, don't go round don't and go, round. Just go up. Just go always upwards and outwards. Okay. Well, you must. You must <laughs> really like get annoyed when you are watching oh, videos of people on know. social media. Oh, I, like I get the most cringiest. I'm like, are you serious? Stop doing. Or right. the worst is when they like take the drop and they're like, look at me. They just go I'm like just this. dropping. I'm like. Please stop doing that. Right. Please, please don't do that. Right. Nobody, nobody's got time to do this. No one's Let's got time. And that oil would for sure drop on my yeah. clothes and stain yes. something. Yeah. I wanted to talk about your routine because your skin is, I don't want to ask your age, but I do know your age and I think you should share it because your skin is literally flawless. Thank you. You have no wrinkles. I know he's talked I have about- wrinkles on my forehead. I mean, there's like one faint line there, <laughs> but your skin is insane. You're- can you say your age? Yeah, of course. Um, I, so I turned forty-seven, and um, yeah, I, I. I That's wild. It's, <laughs> it's actually, I, I, your skin is wild. And can we just say, I mean, I do love Botox. Yes. You do not get Botox. No. You've never had injectables mm-hmm. in your face. I, you know, I. That is so, fucked, V. Yeah. Sorry, I just spat on you, but I, I literally <laughs> am bl- like, you're a glazed donut to the extreme. You know. Age is so interesting. We start to, um, uh, you know, put people on a shelf after a certain age. And I think there's a certain empowerment that we get as we start going into our 40s and mid 40s. And I definitely feel like I'm so excited to be 47. So it's interesting to me. You're like, wait, do you want to say your age? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to say my age. Yeah. Like, I want to I want to shout, shout it my, from the rooftop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it's empowering for other individuals, other women out there. And I say women because, you know, I can only talk about other females. I can't talk about men. I don't, I don't know that. But I feel like it's such an exciting time for us. Like it's, you know, we're in our 40s. We know the shit that we're willing to take. And Definitely the crap that we're not willing to take. Yeah. You know, you know you, you know your body, you know your skin, you know what's working. And and I think that's just so empowering. So there's like this beautiful light that shines from within. Um, Botox and fillers. So my husband always is funny because he's like, if you ever get that shit in your face, I'm going to divorce you. Yeah, my and husband I'm- said that and <laughs> he's did still not there. <laughs> listen. He's did still not there, listen. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't have any problems with my lines and wrinkles. Yeah. Um, I, you know, think it's it's a part of my journey. It tells stories and I'm really okay with that. I think society has made it into a negative. I never say anti-aging. I think it's such a harsh word. So I always say pro-aging because mm. the inevitable is, is we are going to age. We cannot pause it we can you can put all the botox and fillers in and sure you're paralyzing the muscle and you know you're stopping it from moving and that's not a problem that's what you want to do it's not an issue but you are still aging yeah you, like you can't you can't stop that there is nothing that pauses that so for me i'm like yes like i'm i'm excited to go into these later stages of my life Yes, I have a fine line and wrinkle. You know, yes, you know, I have some lines when I squint. Um, I laugh a lot and I squint a lot and I smile a lot. And and I think that's just, to me, that's beautiful. But I do want to say people often will start with, oh, you know, how do you feel about Botox and fillers? I bet you hate it. No, I don't hate it. As long as you know what the product is, what you're putting in your face, you understand all the if, ands, and buts, you understand the, you know, contraindications, the possibilities, just know all the information, be really empowered with understanding what this product is that you're injecting. And if you still feel good about it, you should totally do it. Yeah. Like who am I to judge you for putting Botox in your face? You want to do it, makes you feel happy, Yeah. makes you feel beautiful, good for you. Yeah. Listen, I think the goal, I mean, at least I can speak for myself is to look natural and my yeah. best self yeah. now when I'm 60 yeah maybe I, I want some wrinkles I mean I yeah. think that's also a little weird you know what yeah. I mean yeah so I feel like kind of like with with you know as I get older it's like different decisions are kind of being made yeah. with like what I feel and you know how I feel like 
you know, I want to put forward my best self. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a fine balance and I think it can be a really slippery slope for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think that's where the concern probably from your husband, I know my husband, yeah. um, is like, I do not want you looking like a whacked out version of yeah. yourself. Like frozen. Like yeah. who doesn't want to know if you're happy or if you're sad or if you're mad? Probably like, my kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully my children. Well, my kids just hear me. Um, okay, so what do you think in terms of skincare um, is sort of like the next big thing that people should keep on their radar? Like, is there anything, I mean, I know you talked about trends and not being trendy, but is there anything kind of like new that you see kind of like products are moving towards that you think people should keep their eyes out for? You know, I think that's a really hard question for me to answer because I don't follow trends yeah. and I really do try and tell clients and customers and people who DM me like you know oh, what's the you know oh I found this or I found this like you know don't don't follow trends I think I think the beauty industry as a whole is a really exciting place right now I think the few things that I would say don't do is don't subscribe to celebrity skincare I think that one's really interesting mm. um like celebrities that are coming out with their with own skincare, brands yeah oh holla j-lo yeah. v is coming yeah. after you I feel like that's really interesting to me like wait like I you know I love I love fashion yeah it doesn't make me you know a fashion designer I'm not yeah. gonna be showcasing a whole line of you know skirts and tops and dresses yeah. at the next New York fashion week yeah like just because you like something yeah just because you have money behind you and investors behind you it doesn't give you a platform to then go and create skincare and priced at anywhere between like or five hundred dollars for a serum. Yeah, you know, not gonna mention Kim Kardashian. I was literally just saying, Kimmy K. Yeah, it is very expensive. It's very expensive. Yeah. Ryan, do not buy Kimmy K's line. No, I'm gonna pass on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a hard pass, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I mean, the price tag alone is like, no, thank you. Um. Okay. A question. We've one last question. Um. I feel like we've talked a lot about medical grade skincare. And I know you have a lot of amazing brands. You love Elemis. You love Jan yeah. Marini, Augustinus Bader. Um, you have incredible brands, even just ingredients that people can look for um, that they can include in their beauty routine that yeah. maybe aren't, you know, as costly. Okay. So I think rather than ingredients, because the rosacea client is going to go and get a salicylic product. Right. The way that, I always say to read labels, which makes it easier for somebody to choose mm -hmm. regardless of what that brand is in a drugstore or at Sephora or Alt Beauty or wherever you're shopping. Right. Um, when you if, you, if you say, oh, I'm going to get a vitamin C, for instance, if that vitamin C shows at the bottom of the ingredient list and there's like, 11 ingredients before that that you cannot read out and there's lots of numbers and lots of letters then don't buy that vitamin c okay it's like food readings labels correct yeah okay correct so it's not about saying you know oh go get your cetaphil or your cerave or you know um i don't know a vino or right. you know I don't know, oil of Olay, whatever, right, like right. Clinique, whatever. It's not saying that. It's saying, okay, really just be knowledgeable when you go in and you're like, right, I can only afford a cleanser, a moisturizer. Let me take a look. V said, you know, I, I need hydration. So maybe you're looking for like glycerin. You're looking for shea butter. You're looking for more gentle ingredients, niacinamide. Those ingredients should be in the first four or five um, ingredients that are at the top of your list. Okay. Everything else at the bottom, it's fine because it's in smaller quantities. Right. Okay. Does that help? A that bit? totally helps. I think that's really good advice because I think, again, you know, a lot of medical grade products are amazing, but they are expensive. Yeah. So if someone's going to a drugstore, you know, it's just like going to the grocery store, right? If the first ingredient's sugar, yeah. you're fucked. Yeah. Don't get exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Yes, exactly. Um, okay. I think that's great. I feel like we have 
I mean, I have learned so much. Uh, I love um, that. Have you learned a lot, Ryan? Yes, Are you gonna... I have. I mean, I'm just got to listen back to it all, all over again and write everything down. I was going to test you. I was going to say to you, okay, Ryan, tell me what you've learned today. <laughs> What is the one product you what need on the, your skin every yeah. single day? Go. I think what I'm what I'm walking away from the most is don't listen to celebrities and listen yeah. to people who know what they're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, this was amazing. And I think like we said at the beginning, before we started recording, skin is the biggest conversation right now. Who does yeah. not want good skin? Yeah. Everybody at any age wants good, healthy skin. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing you said was, honestly, start from the inside out. You can give all the good products, you can invest in all the amazing skincare. Yeah. But if you aren't kind of dealing with what's going on internally, correct. Taking a shit every day. Yeah. Shit every day, people. Shit every day. Like you will not <laughs> you have heard good it skin. Here first. You heard it here <laughs> from the celebrity skincare expert V. That's what she tells That's people. The one thing you can take away from this podcast, it is have your bowel movements every day. Every day, people, every day. Oh, that was amazing. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having so nice me. To this see was you. so fun. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.